Now, since you've got your golden barbell for uh, your dedication to bodybuilding, I thought I'd bring up something you posted about another great from the golden era of bodybuilding, Robbie Robertson. Uh -huh. And this is what you had to say about Robbie. And they say the bodies are better today. Bigger some yes, better no. Look at Robbie here. Perfect. Back then they trained, had fun, enjoyed it. Did it because it was their passion, way of life. Just good, basic training, eating, etc. No fancy bullshit macros. None of the, the new bullshit chemicals and the shit people go on with today. Robbie still looks great today and is a true gentleman and class act. Nothing but respect. Uh -huh. And I'll put that picture in that um, in this video and what an amazing physique. Yes, very good. Considering the the it's um, it's timeless and um, you know, you look at this and you've got to wonder, has it really progressed? No, nah, well, like, guys still train hard and shit, but when you look at them now, they don't have the classic lines and that good quality mass they had back then, and Sergio Arnold, Serge Dubray, Bertel Fox, all these guys that trained with basic knowledge of diet and basic drug use had that real thick, hard, dense muscle with small waists and that, and you look at guys back then, like Robbie and even Arnold still training now and a lot of those guys from back that era still look fantastic today and still go to the gym where you have guys now who okay some look big and freaky but they're bloated and fat and die at fucking 35 to 40 yeah so I don't think it has progressed it's actually got worse yeah and you look at him there and um uh -huh. just uh um, imagine some of the guys today who are competing now in the pro circuit or on the Olympia stage, pick anyone. They're not singling anyone out. Sometimes I might look at someone like, I don't know who, really, really Winkler, big mass mm. monster, or Rami. I can't picture them at 70, if they're going to be alive at 70, or healthy at 70 and stuff like that. So, you know, sad, but it's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I, I thought the funniest... These people back then did it because they loved it. It wasn't for the... Sure... Some of them got contracts eventually, got a little bit of money, but to them it's in their blood. They love the training, they love the whole thing behind it, whereas today guys do it for contracts or they do it for fucking fame on the internet or shit like that. A lot of them, when they retire, they still don't go to the gym. They just fucking disappear. There's a few around still, like Jay still keeps involved in the sport, but there's been so many pros since when I started, you never hear of them anymore because they just disappear. Yeah. They give it up. And Robbie made an interesting comment. Lee, I know the feeling of being banned for life. Mm -hmm. Plus two lifetimes. <laughs> so, um, and he was saying, because I refuse to use the weeder supplements and appear at photo shoots for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got blackboard a lot. And I think I was telling, I'm not sure how it went, but I remember he had a, I'm not sure if he had a lawsuit or something going with the weeders because... You know the picture, the famous picture I always see of Joe Weeder with his arms folded. Yeah, that like that's Robbie Robinson's body with Joe Weeder's head stuck on it. So. Oh really? Yeah. So I know it. He was always not sure if he was trying to sue him over that image or something like that. But yeah. Well, I'd say a bit of advice to Robbie would be that would be a battle that would be um, <laughs> <laughs> impossible yeah. to win because. Um, well, it's true though. Like you, yeah, even. I think I was one of the first to get paid eventually for photo shoots. Like when I did all my first ones, you never got paid. And I had an argument with the photographer once because he goes, oh, Lee, those body parts we did, thank you. And that, you know, the magazine brought all of them. And he didn't even buy me lunch. I think you just sold all those photos. I'm just new to America. I got nothing. You got paid. So the magazine, when they sell the magazine to me, they're going to make money. Yeah. The writer who did the interview, he gets paid. But yet I get nothing. So it wasn't until... When I was with MD that I finally said, listen, I'm not doing it for free anymore. So they started paying me $1,000 per body part that I would shoot and stuff. And then I finally got put on a contract with them. For the, so then I just got so much a month to do photo shoots and videos and that sort of thing. And did like an interview in their magazine, two interviews, like those question bits yeah. every month. So 
that was good. But up until it ends, it's like, oh, it's published. I said, well, in the beginning, that's good. You know, until you get known, they get your face out there. It's good to not get paid. But then once you become a big name in the sport and people are, are buying the mags because you're on the cover, you're in it, then you should at least get something back. Yeah, yeah. So they eventually started paying. But a lot of them would be like, Lee, you want to do this photo shoot? I don't know how much, nothing. If I say, well, I want to get paid, they're like, nah, they just go get somebody else who wants to do it for free to get his face yeah, out there. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm. yeah, which is fair enough. Once you build your name up, then uh -huh, yeah, you exactly. can... Exactly. Could you imagine, like, and then, like, half the stuff, too, Lee, can you wear this T-shirt? Some photographers will get clothing. Like, I know when Gasp clothing first started, Per Banal, it was like one of his friends from Netherlands or somewhere in one of those countries, Stardlet, that come to the photo shoot, like, can you wear this top, can you wear that top, so gas ball, if someone's getting all this free publicity, myself and Branch and all these guys would be wearing gas clothing, and then once the name got really big, they might have given some guys some contracts, I'm not sure, but generally they just say, oh, you can keep the top, and all this, and she was like, ah. what we fucking do, I get free t-shirts, and this guy's making fucking tons of money, because oh, I see that shirt Lee's wearing, I want to buy that shirt, yeah. I think of people now on Instagram send me, hey Lee, I've started a clothing company, can I send the shirt to you, and that way you take a picture, and post it I'm like well I would but it's like hey if I post a picture and it's a good shirt people are going to go fuck I like that shirt and you're going to make money from it I said what do I get the yeah, free yeah, t-shirt yeah. it's like yeah I'm not trying to be an asshole or anything but you know could you imagine Michael Jordan Nike ringing up or someone hey yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah, Nike yeah, shoes yeah. can we just take a picture wearing yeah, your shoes yeah. and put it on our site so yeah it's like you feel like an asshole sometimes but it's like they're, they're out there to make money and shit so now, free. If they said, "Listen, Lee, look, we take a photo in the shirt. I'll give you five hundred bucks or whatever." Then you might go, "Okay, yeah, for one yeah, photo, I'll enough. do it." You know, it's like go after what Kardashians get paid like what a million dollars to fucking do an endorsement for someone on their fucking social media. So, I had a guy send me a shaker once, a gold one, because he sent it to other people, and he goes, "Do you want it? You can send it to me." I said, and he sent it to me, and he got really mad. He goes, "Well, can you take a photo of it and then tag us in it and put it on their thing?" And shit, I said, "I said." I would, but I said, but, you know, you got to understand, if I do that, you know, it's a nice looking shaker, people are going to see it, then they're going to buy it. I said, you make money. I said, well, I get a fucking five dollar shaker type thing. So I said, so, no, I said, I really appreciate you sending it to me. It's a nice shaker, but I'm not going to take a photo. And he got mad. So it's like, it's one of these fucking tele telemarketers. Hold on, let's go live. Hello? Oh. oh, I wasn't quick enough. I was going to have him on speaker so we could talk to him. Well, they're good. They're good if you're lonely, aren't they? No, I just get into them. Yeah, well, yesterday I was running for electricity. I said, I didn't call you, did I? I don't want to go. No, this is a good deal. I said, did I call you to want electricity? <laughs> had him going and oh, then he hung up on me. I thought we might have had a good one then. When you see O3 from Victoria. Yeah, I know. They're always from there, aren't they? I blocked that one. I don't know how many numbers they have. Yeah. I blocked so many. Well, I always just tell them that me, um, my husband pays for the electricity bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you let them just go on and on and on at the very end. You tell them you're renting. No, no. You just tell them your husband pays for it. And they go, oh, that that throws a bit of a curveball. And and so. what are you wearing? <laughs> no, well, you send them pictures. Mm -hmm.